It was cold, it was raining that day, so so I had to find some place where I could find shelter. Shelter, and that was under the Canby Street Bridge, where I could sleep out in the rain. Some other places had fine carports. I grew up in Boston Bar and I came to Vancouver back in the 70s. I was a, a logger back in the 70s here in Vancouver. Then I went to college in Kamloops, Caribou College. I went as a carpenter at the logging industry. Uh, started closing down, so I became a carpenter to make out for the, and I worked as a carpenter here in Vancouver for 35 years until I got hurt by, uh, got into an accident and I broke my leg in five places, so I couldn't work as a carpenter anymore. Well, for, for a, a couple of years, I found myself on the streets and I was uh, homeless. I used to sleep under the, the bridges when it rained or I used to sleep in the parks. And also used to pick cans to make up for the food that I needed. I thought, well, if I, I could get this through this night, I could probably get through another one. Well, it was kind of hard because <clears throat> you'd have to think about where you're going to sleep and how safe it's going to be at night, who you got to watch out for and things. There were a lot of things that go through your mind about what, what you're going to do, what you're going to do the next day too and the day after. It's just a continual thing of thinking about all these different thoughts that go through your mind. Well, a lot, of, a lot of people, like, they make friends by meeting on the street and some need help and someone asks you for help. You'd help people out, just like we all seem to group together and try to help each other out the best that we, we can. because everybody's in the same situation. The ones that really steal are the ones that are addicted like to drugs and will do anything for it. And they're the ones that are more likely to steal than just the homeless person. The homeless person helps other people out. Like people that, uh, that don't like homeless people. They uh, they want to attack them. I remember one day by Canby Bridge, there was one guy who was telling us about people wanting to beat him up all the time because he was homeless. And so I had got my friends and I told them, I said, well, let's sleep away from this guy and we could watch him watch them at night so that if these guys come around, we could help them out. And it's people like that that help other people. So they're, they're more into uh, helping. During, during my accident, I, I did go through alcoholism because alcoholism was something that relieved my pain, relieved the, the things that I was going through, like uh, not working anymore was one of the problems that I had because I couldn't, couldn't work as a carpenter or I was used to working a lot. So I started drinking more and more and I became uh, addicted to alcohol. 
It was when I was out there every day, like, I met up with a group of friends I met up with. And we started drinking every day, meeting every day, and picking all the cans that we had and to help supply our drinks and cigarettes. Well, what first inspired me to quit drinking was I got tired of it every day. Like every day you wake up and you have a really bad hangover and I didn't like that. I didn't like that feeling anymore. I thought I could maybe do something better with myself than just drinking every day and it hurts not only you but your family also. Well, the friends that I used to drink with, they, they're the ones that helped me. They're the ones that encouraged me more to quit because every time I went to see them, they'd offer me a drink and I'd say, no, I quit. And they'll say, good for you. They'll shake my hand and they'll say, keep on. So after about after about five months, they'd still ask, and I'll say, no, I quit. And five months turned into a year. Then some, maybe a couple other people followed my lead too, and they quit. The Megaphone itself started around 2007-2008 as a bike weekly magazine uh, with the intention of providing economic opportunity for homeless or low income individuals who buy the magazine um, for uh, a fraction of the cost and sell it for $2 and keep the profit that they make. Megaphone, I got involved with them about 10 years ago. I was down I seen this big lineup on Hastings. They were handing out cameras for the Hope and Shadows calendar. So I went, I got a camera, and uh, after that, I won an uh, honorary prize for third place in the camera contest. Then I started selling the uh, Hope and Shadows calendars and they introduced me to the Megaphone street paper so I started selling those the same time as I was selling the calendars and, and it all worked out because people got to know me and the street paper at the same time so No, no, I thought, you know, it was, it was good to have uh, a place like of your own where you had your own kitchen, your own bathroom, where you could shower, shave, and your own bed to sleep on. It, it's a lot better than like even going to shelters or anything, but it gives you, gives you more sense of pride to have something and something to look forward to, too, to each day that you're... It would be to think about if you were in a predicament in that situation where you're going to lose a daughter or a son or somebody to homelessness or even yourself gonna become homelessness. It could happen to you and to think about it, like just think for a minute, what would you do?